This pitch breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins. All right, hello, my name is Jared Burris, and I am the CEO of Versalate Research. So we have created a Versalate or versatile insulation, which is an alternative to down and synthetic insulations. And it is prim primarily made from llama fleece. That's right, llamas. So let's imagine you're on a summer camping trip to your favorite park. You climb into your tent and cozy on into your sleeping bag, and you try to fall asleep. You can't. You lay awake and overheat in your downer synthetic sleeping bag, and eventually fall asleep outside of the bag itself. What initially started as an idea to solve a sleeping bag's comfort range ended up creating a versatile insulation whose applications go far and beyond the sleeping bag. So Versalate's biggest performance feature is that it has a 50 degree comfort range. There we go. This is 30 to 35 degrees more than synthetic and down insulations that are currently on the market and is all possible due to the natural primary component, which is llama fleece. So llama fleece is made up of these hollow fibers, which actually act like a straw in warmer temperatures and wick away moisture from your skin, thus keeping you cool. The fibers also trap air in the colder temperatures as well and keep you warm at a comfortable 82 degrees. So Versalate has an R value of 0 0.592, which is 97% of that of the top synthetic insulations on the market today. Versalate is also 100% hypoallergenic, it is flame retardant and insulates when wet. So Versalate is very environmentally friendly. We did our own carbon analysis, which included everything from the amount of gasoline in the tractors to make hay for the geese, to the amount of manure left on the Andean pastures. And we concluded that we are almost two times more carbon sustainable than down. By switching one ton of down to one ton of Versalate is the equivalent of 26,071 people switching from incandescent to CFL light bulbs. We're focusing on making Versalate a socially responsible insulation as well. On average, the South American llama ranchers make between $200 to $800 per year. The current supply chain is controlled by these large distributors and processing plants who determine the price of both llama and alpaca fleece. Once Versalate is on the market, we can increase these llama ranchers' livelihood up to 75% within the first year. So we're currently working within the outdoor market, and we just got our first order of insulation with a company called Cotopaxi. So Cotopaxi is an e-commerce outdoor brand who focuses on selling gear for good. They're buying enough insulation to make about 1,000 jackets, which will generate $150,000 worth of revenue for them. Look out for the jackets this fall. OK, so you're probably thinking, where are they getting all of this llama fleece? Well, there are 4 million llamas in South America. There are about 1.5 million in Peru and another 2.5 million in Bolivia. Currently, only 7% of the world's llama fleece is being collected. We have put ourselves in the middle of a commercial market that simply doesn't yet exist. Over 85% of the world's llama fleece is coming from these small villages within the Altiplano region of the Andes Mountains. We're currently working with a supplier who can get us up to about 75,000 pounds of llama fleece each year. But as we continue to grow, we're going to be creating a cooperative program which focuses on the community development and support. We'll be working with individual rancher communities which will help to empower these individual llama ranchers while also expanding our control and the amount of uh, llama fleece within our supply chain. Speaking of supply chain, this year we're looking to collect about 10,000 pounds of fleece. With the help of investment, we're going to, create, or we're going to increase our supply to 300,000 pounds for 2016. 2017 and 2018, we're going to collect 500,000 and 700,000 pounds respectively. And then we want to create 1 million pounds worth of supply by 2019. So we're currently selling the insulation based off of $16 per pound of llama fleece. Within the first year, we're looking to sell 1,000 pounds, which will generate $16,000 worth of revenue. Um, by next year, as we're ramping up the supply chain, we're looking to sell 15,000 pounds, which is $240,000 worth of revenue, gearing up for a 2017 large hard launch. With a hard launch onto the outdoor, textile, and bedding industries, we're looking to sell 125,000 pounds in 2017 with a revenue of $2 million. With the supply increasing for 2018 and 2019, we're going to sell 250,000 and 500,000 pounds respectively with $4 million and $8 million. 
So as we look towards the future, we're placing ourselves within the outdoor textile. Sorry about that. There we go. That probably would have helped on that. All right, as we look towards the future, we're placing ourselves within the outdoor textile and home and furnishing industries. We want to change the way that the word llama is heard across the globe and begin to build a new emerging market through our Versalade insulation. We have created an insulation that aligns with our consumer's way of life, forever changing the way that insulation is thought of. With an insulation that gives consumers something to be excited about through our performance, sustainability, and social responsibility, Versalite insulation gives us all a full 360 degrees of comfort. Thank you. Yeah. Steve Nolan from Bonnier Adventures. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Hey, thank you. Jared, I think you did a great job. Thank especially you. considering you had to work on it probably last night and yep. wing it up. A mm -hmm. um, couple questions. Your initial slides were about sleeping bags. I'm curious, what about weight and wetness? That you know, for campers, that matters a lot. Do you have any statistics on that? Yeah, so we designed, so initially we made sleeping bags. We actually ran a Kickstarter campaign that was 156% funded, uh, which was a lot of fun. And we made it so that the weight for the sleeping bags could be comparable to synthetic sleeping bags currently on the market. Okay. Um, the other question was more about the business of the business. So um, you said the supply chain doesn't exist yet. I would imagine that the logistics of pulling that off is you know, um, a real big challenge mm -hmm. for you. Equally so is you're, you're having to talk to manufacturers because you're just in the supply chain, right? Yeah. So have, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the manufacturers that you've got traction with to um, manufacture some of these products this year and next? Yeah, so as far as the manufacturing of the insulation itself, we have essentially a unlimited capacity. Um, I know they're pulling out probably 100,000 yards at least each day. Um, so that's not a problem. The biggest concern is the supply of the llama fleece and making sure that that is available. Like I said, we have this 75,000 pounds uh, through our supplier right now, which will give us a really good headway uh, for at least the next year or so. Um, but that is when I want to create these cooperative programs specifically to kind of get the llama fleece from out of these small communities. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jared, uh, good job. Thanks. You know, I, I think when you're starting a business, you've got to be ready to pitch uh, and for the audience. You know, whether you walk into an elevator with a guy that could invest, or you're out in front of a group like this, or you're pitching somewhere, either a manufacturer or whatever, you've, you've gotta be ready with the right dose of, of information and the pertinent points. And you should be ready to, to sort of get up and pitch. Uh, but still, that doesn't make it uh, easy, and, uh, and I definitely have a lot of respect for you for jumping up and, and doing it. Um, to echo Steve, I didn't know quite what you were, I thought you were selling sleeping bags in the beginning, and then, uh, and then toward the end, I sort of got a little bit more confused as to what your business is. Um, I, I would just tighten that up a little bit. Maybe just start right from the beginning. You know, th this is this is what we're trying to uh, accomplish. Um, I do appreciate the 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 environmental benefit to to what you're doing, but if you want my money, I don't know that you want to spend about sixty percent of your time talking about that. I, I, I it's important. It's it's a thing, but it's. You, you've got to realize your audience, you know, so, so to speak, you know, as a person, I bought you, I think it's great, but y y you've got to, I think, give it appropriate time and, and sort of move on, make the points. We're hitting these things and these things. Uh, most of your numbers were ac according to that. And um, uh, I, I think you need a little bit more detail about what I'm looking at is the person, the idea, the market. And those, and I'm trying to put, at, at, at your stage, I'm trying to put everything into, uh, so maybe a little bit more of your background. I realize, you know, you're young, you're just getting started, but maybe you could point to some other people that are sort of know the industry. Um, uh, also, particularly, y y you've got to get in your relationships with these, you know, South America, you know, it, it's, 
to the degree that you you have some relationships, you could talk about those. You know, sort of answering the question, why you, why why Jared, um, and then the, uh, the the market, specifically the market for you know who's going to buy this, how you're going to make money, not necessarily how much fleece rough you know fleece you're going to be able to get and things okay. like that. But overall, you know, great job, great start. One question for you. Uh, so do you think I should focus more on the performance aspects, like the numbers that I have be behind that? Or are you saying just in general talking about? The business of the business. So you're talking about supply chain specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, like who you're gonna sell to, what, what the market is, who, who else might be out there. Maybe you are completely trailblazing, but what, what's the demand? Mm -hmm. Say you get a hold of all this stuff, you know, it's, it's where's the, the demand? You made okay. reference to it, but your numbers were more towards ancillary yes. things. You know? Yep, and that is based off of our concern for the supply. Mm -hmm. But I completely understand what you're saying and we'll definitely work towards that in the future. Right, like I don't, I don't have any idea if 75 million is a lot. I don't even know what the units are, you know, it, yeah. it's kind of, what I do understand is, you know, market and for, you know, money okay, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and trying to map it into size of market, what, what, your, what you think your market share could be, what you think you're going to do instead of sort of raw capacity of fleece. I'm like, that's, that, that's w well within your business. Okay, great. Thank you. Got one in, in the audience. Yes. Just real quick, I'm assuming that the areas where this wool comes from, they used it for thousands of years. You might want to also talk about that as a proven product in that area to just bring it to a new market. Okay. Great. Right. I also have a question just to harp on that. You know, socially, socially and environmental friendly, that's all good. But whenever people are writing a check, they want to know, you know, take yourself, commit to yourself in your customer's shoes. Why do I want to buy it? Uh, you know, well, how, as a customer, how can I market this to my final end, end customer? You know, is it the performance aspect? What is the cost per pound of llama wool to down or synthetic? That's the sort of stuff to me that the actual dollars and cents, not not the supply. That's just hitting on what you have to say. No, that sounds great. Okay. Thank you.